I'm going to make a claim, and I'm going to let you be the judge of that claim. And it is, there has been no more exciting time to be in the geospatial intelligence business than today. The demand, thank you, yes, absolutely. The demand for our products and services is insatiable. The availability and accessibility of spatially and temporally referenced data is almost unlimitless. And advanced analytics, cloud technologies, is ushering in a new era of computing. It is no wonder that NGA is using Esri's products and services to deliver GeoInt at the speed of need. Many of you have probably seen or heard Simon Sinek's TED Talk on why. The why for us is clear. To create the decision space our customers need so they can take actions that save lives and protect our nation. Every day, we go to work knowing what we need to do. Today is about the how. It's about how we are changing the way we work. For those of us in the geospatial intelligence business, we are entering the fourth wave of advancement in our industry. This wave is marked by artificial intelligence and cloud technologies applied to remotely sensed imaging data and the sea of spatially temporally referenced data from sources and sensors that are everywhere. In order to change the way we work, we need to do two things. We need and must do it together. And we must use all the data. For us in the intelligence community, it's rare that we have an opportunity to share publicly how we do our work. I'm really excited that today, we're going to be able to give you a glimpse into exactly that, how we do our work. So let's get on with it. And please join me in welcoming two of my GeoIn analysts, Mark and Rich. Thank you, Sue. NGA supports missions all over the world. And today, we want to look at humanitarian response in Africa, specifically the world's newest country, South Sudan. Since independence in 2011, it's experienced thousands of violent events and famine, causing nearly a third of the population to flee their homes. Now, we're going to show you three new ways that NGA and Esri will be changing the way we work to respond to these types of real-world crises and achieve NGA's mission of providing timely and relevant GeoInt. In this scenario, we receive reports of fighting around the town of Kajokeji, and the State Department has asked us to confirm if they're true. Normally, an analyst would open multiple programs to view their imagery and make observations, which can be time-consuming. So let's go to our sandbox, where we can experiment with some future technologies. The first application that's changing the way we work is ArcGIS Excalibur. It's a single, focused application that allows us to search and discover imagery and rapidly take those pixels and turn them into structured observations. We'll start by connecting to our library of digital globe imagery. Now we can search for the most recent images and add them to our queue. Using the queued imagery, we'll create a new project. And here's an example of a project we just created. It comes with instructions telling our analysts what kind of observations they should be making. In this case, damaged structures. So now we can select an image and view it with image focus. This allows us to see it at a more natural angle. So as an imagery analyst, when we're looking for evidence that conflict has occurred in South Sudan, we know we're looking for things like damaged structures. This is because when fighting occurs in an area, oftentimes the structures there are collapsed and burnt down. So let's take a look at the Wawali area near Kajokeji. We can see there are a few structures still intact, but there are also large areas where the structures are collapsed and burnt down. Now we can capture this observation based on the level of damage. In this case, it's extensive. 
We can add key information, like required comments, and the facility type. Finally, we can see the pre-populated image metadata. Now, we'll submit our observation, and it becomes part of our feature service, allowing our users to have the most updated information. These structured observations give us the geoint we need to confirm the State Department that fighting has occurred in the area and that we'll use in our analysis moving forward. So next, the State Department might ask us to find suitable locations in the Kajokeji area for an internally displaced persons, or IDP, camp. To do that today, an analyst would collect all the data and create a model on their desktop where it remains largely unshared with other NGA analysts. But that will be changing with the next application we're going to show you, ArcGIS Notebooks, which are sharing our analysis from the beginning. We'll start by searching our library of tradecraft for humanitarian response. We can find a notebook like this one called IDP Camp Selection. This was developed by our Syria team and includes all the data used in the analysis from sources like Oak Ridge National Laboratory and the United Nations. It also includes the methodology used to find suitable IDP locations. Now to execute for our mission, we simply modify the code, change it for our area of interest, and we can run the entire analysis for South Sudan. We'll see the results of our analysis in a little bit. At, N <laughs> at NGA, we work together in teams, and the next generation of ArcGIS Hub includes a geospatial collaborative workspace and at NGA, we're calling it Mission Central. So let's take a look at the South Sudan Humanitarian Mission Central. As you can see, we can quickly gain access to who's working on this project, and we have, an, we have a map depicting our area of interest. Sharing as we go along is key to collaboration, which ensures mission success. So for instance, we have some examples and access to some examples of structured observation and how to collect that. Two, we have a link to Excalibur where we collected our data and a dashboard showing our real-time SOM collection. Next, the team also has information about the tradecraft used for the mission, the notebook used for the analysis. And look, here are the results of our final IDP camp analysis. We need to get that out to our customers right away, Mark. And this part I'm pretty excited about. We're going to be able to give you a sneak peek of the next generation of ArcGIS called Experience Builder. With Experience Builder, it, allows us, it gives us the ability to rapidly configure a dynamic application. Here's how it works. Let's start off by adding some text. Now let's go ahead and share a map of our work. Let's go ahead and add a list showing data from one of our map layers. And in this case, it's going to be population of our, of our IDP camps. Lastly, we also want to include, we want to try and gather some feedback, because naturally that's going to help out our results and, and our analysis. So we can do that by adding a survey. Now, once we have this page configured and looking the way that we want, <clears throat> we'll want to go ahead and share that on our customer page. So now let's look at a fully built out experience. This experience enables us to engage with our partners. This allows us, this allows us to, to see our IDP camp analysis results and give feedback on what they are seeing in the area. For instance, which IDP camps do they prefer? But most importantly, they can have open dialogue with us, keeping everyone informed and engaged real time. So me as a long-time analyst, I'm really excited about this chat function inside the platform. These experiences are easily repeatable as templates when a new event occurs, allowing us to react quickly to new challenges. These examples will be changing the way we work as analysts and better enable NGA to ride that fourth wave in support of our GEOINT mission, our customers, and our nation, enabling us to deliver GEOINT at the speed of need taking us from Mission Central to Mission Impact. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Rich. We've just demonstrated the importance of the new technologies that are necessary for us to match the opportunities and the challenges we face in the fourth wave of GEOINT. 
Just as important, Mark and Rich demonstrated the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities that are critical to having as a modern GeoInt analyst. We appreciate your time today to allow us to give you a glimpse into how we are changing the way we work, how we are creating the human machine team to deliver GeoInt at the speed of need. Thank you.